Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Creative Mornings Muscat's October event. This is our seventh virtual event. We've had three physical events, which seems like centuries ago. Um, and we're excited to continue this year virtually, and I hope you are as well. Uh, it's so nice to see that there are people who are um, part of our community who have attended many of our events before. Welcome back. And it's also nice to see new joiners. Welcome new joiners. Um, before we get started, I just want to make sure everyone knows how to use everything. So if you go to participants, if you click on participants, there's this thing called raise hand. And just a show of hands, who has attended a Creative Mornings Muscat event before? Raise your hand just so we can do a quick poll. If you've attended a Creative Mornings Muscat event before, uh, click on raise hand. Excellent. Yes. Bravo. Okay, good. A good amount of people. And I'm, I know people from my team have attended every event, so they're not raising their hands. Nice to see you guys. Welcome back. Okay, you can put your lower your hand. Um, and now, if you haven't, if this is your first Creative Mornings Muscat event, also raise your hand. First Creative Mornings Muscat. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. We hope to see you guys again. Welcome, welcome. All right. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, you can lower your hand. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say that we really, really, really encourage participation and interaction with our community members. So if you may, and I said this earlier, but now I'm going to say it again, please, please, please turn on your cameras if you can. I know it's early. I know it's really early in the morning, but we love you. We don't judge. You know, we just want to see your beautiful, beautiful faces So this is the time, if you want, you can turn on your cameras. You can do so at any point during the next 60 to 90 minutes. So um, feel free to do that. Don't be shy to speak up if you want to say something in the chat. If you want to uh, speak up, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Or you can unmute yourself and just interrupt us. That's totally fine as well. Um, if you know how to use Zoom, you can switch between speaker view and gallery view, depending on the view you want to see. Okay, we always start with a quick icebreaker, especially because it's in the morning. We want to, you know, wake ourselves up. And I see some of you are trying to do that. So we're going to start with a quiz, but I'm going to need, let's say, four volunteers. So if you would like to volunteer for the game, um, I see someone called Noah Shamsi has his hands up uh, and Sami and then we need two more, two more girls. Come on, let's, let's keep it equal. Two guys, two girls would be nice. Okay, okay, fine. To encourage you a bit more, I'm going to explain the game so you guys don't feel freaked out that you don't know what you're going to do. The game is called Guess the Country and it's basically you have to guess the name of it since we can't travel. It would be nice to travel virtually. Um, you guess the country by emojis. So I'm going to give you emoji hints, and you have to guess what country these emojis represent. See, it's, it's simple. It's simple. So volunteers, raise your hand. Yes. All right. OK. Excellent. All right. So we have. We have four volunteers, Stephanie, Leith, Saleh, and Sami. So I'm going to ask you guys to unmute yourselves. Um, hold on. I think you guys can unmute yourselves. Yes, you can. And just speak in the mic so we know we can hear you. Hello. Mic check. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And then Stephanie and Leith. Hey. Hi, Leith. Hi, how are you? Uh, Stephanie, I think you're still muted. Okay, now. Yeah, now. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys for participating in this game. The way it works, I'm going to show you a bunch of emojis and you can just speak up. The first person I hear 
that guesses the country correct gets a point. And then we'll see who is the winner. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. First country. France. Paris. Uh, France. France. One point for Sami. Bravo. Okay. Next country. Ready? Japan. Japan. Nate said it first. Japan. One point late, one point Sami. Gotta be fast. Wake up in the morning. <laughs> okay. Okay, next country. It gets harder, I promise. Switzerland. Switzerland. Leith said it first. Two points for Leith. Okay, next country. Morocco? Morocco, Morocco. Oh, okay. Saleh got it right. Okay, so we have two points Leith, one point Saleh, one point Sami. I think this is the last one. So it's either going to be a tie or Leith takes the win. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Leif got it, Saudi Arabia. We were a bit confused about this one because everyone's like, this is every Gulf country. But, <laughs> but uh, I guess the stereotype goes to Saudi. So congratulations, Leif. You are the winner of this icebreaker game. You can all unmute uh, mute yourselves back again. Thank you for participating. I think you get a free mug. We'll see. We didn't really decide on the prize, but I think you get a Creative Mornings mug. So congratulations. All right. We're going to thank our Creative Mornings sponsors, whom without we couldn't have made any of this possible. Our first sponsor is MailChimp, who has been supporting Creative Mornings for over 11 years. You can find, we're going to send some information in the chat, and you can find them on Instagram, Twitter, on their website. They've introduced a new uh, program called Essentials, which is in collaboration with Vice, where they've, uh, I think, interviewed like bike messengers, laundromats, food banks, and more who are coping with, with COVID-19 while staying safe. We're going to put a link to Essentials in the chat as well. One of our team members will do that. Our second sponsor is Basecamp and Hey Email. Um, uh, check out Rework, which is a po podcast by Basecamp, where they talk about this amazing new email invention. And the name of the episode is The Email That Changed My Life. We will also link that episode in the chat. So um, now, before we start on our main main events, we have to, have to, have to read our virtual manifesto. Our virtual manifesto is basically our ideas and ideals that, that Creative Mornings represents. And I'm going to need one volunteer to read it out. Here is the script so you don't feel intimidated. One volunteer, please raise your hand if you would like to read the manifesto. I'm going to give you guys time. It's okay. Take your time. Think about it if you want to speak up or not. If, if no one raises their hand, I'm just going to randomly pick from the 36 participants. And most likely it will be someone I know personally. So, okay, I'm gonna pick. Are you ready, Lemis? Lemis, would you please unmute yourself? And I had a feeling you would do this. <laughs> I like your Good voice. Good morning. So you can read the manifesto, please, for us. Okay. All right. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections in learning from others in jazz hands, virtual claps and virtual snaps. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. Thank you, Lemise. That was awesome. I'm going to, we need to give a round of applause and it's awkward on Zoom, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to unmute everyone. So it's going to be a bit chaotic and then I'm going to count to three and we're going to clap at the same time. Are you guys ready for this? We're only going to do this a few times today. So let's make it work. Okay. 
I'm gonna unmute. Hold on. Hold on. How did I do that? <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I don't know why today I'm just out of it, but I used to know, I promise I used to know how to unmute everyone. Current and new participants. Okay, let's just let's just do this, right? Let's just do some jazz hands for Lemise. <laughs> so ready in one, two, three. I don't know why the button for unmute is just gone. It used to be here, I promise. Okay, moving on. On to our main event, transit. So if you haven't heard, our theme for this month is transit. Creative Mornings has a theme every month and this month's theme is called transit. So what does transit mean? Um, the question that Creative Mornings asked is how can we make space for new ideas and creative energy while staying in place? And while cars, trains, boats, planes, and our many modes of transportation may take us where we need to go, taking note of our inner worlds and soaking in the detail around us often um, is the best vehicle for renewal. So, so I think what they're trying to say is that how can we stay in place while getting immersed in the creative process, right? We need to find our calm while we're staying in place. We fill our cup first um, and it will help us become a fuller version of ourselves, which brings me to our incredible speaker of the month. Um, she was born and raised in the UK to Omani parents. She is known as the Omani ambassador to, as the ambassador to Omani cuisine. She currently works for the Anglo Omani Society and does also uh, host supper clubs and uh, creates digital content for brands to shed a new light on Oman and the region as a whole. Without further ado, I would love to introduce you to Dina Mekki. Jazz hands. Welcome, welcome, Dina. Um, I think I can unmute you. Give me a second. Hi, guys. I'm oh, unmuted. So, excellent. <laughs> Right. Um, oh, my voice is. By the way, guys, it's seven thirty in the morning here. The sun is literally just rising. I've been up since five thirty, so please bear with my voice um, and my English. Even though English is my first language, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> Welcome, Dina. Nice to Thank have you. Thank you. Um, so Nora mentioned that actually it was World Food Day today, so this is really fallen on the right day. So I hope you all spend the rest of your day looking like this guy. I certainly will because I'm hungry. Um, and yeah, we're going to be speaking about transit. I had to take a moment to actually figure out what transit was. So while I am doing my talk, um, I would love for you guys to actually have a think about what transit means to you and then either note it down in the chat as we go along or please tell me at the end. Uh, I think everyone has a different version and it would be nice to know. So. Uh, when I was trying to figure out what transit was, I came across one of my friend's videos, Shema Altamimi. She is an amazing photographer. If you guys um, don't know her already, please check her out. And she was in Dubai for part of the pandemic and she posted this photo. And this is kind of a summary of how I feel all of our transit moments should be. Uh, it was just an act of kindness. You know, this guy eating, he, he kind of filled his cup. Um, he took a moment out of his day to just make someone else's cup feel full. So, you know, if anything, use that as a takeaway. And I think it's a really good way to start the morning on that. Um, so who am I? Oh, I actually don't know who I am. It took me a long time to figure that one out. And I don't know if any of you guys have been born in another country, by raised by parents that aren't from that country. It's a mess. It's a total shambolic mess. Um, I technically by passport and where I was born. I am British. How lucky am I? Um, and my parents are technically from Oman and my mother was born in Zanzibar. Um, but then technically, if I look at her parents and my father's parents, then they are Zanzibaris, they are Bahrainis, they are Kuwaitis. Oh my God, I forgot to pinpoint Bahrain. Oh God, they're gonna kill me. Um, I am technically all of these. And then if I look at my great grandparents, we also kind of are Iranian and Qatari. So it goes back and I could keep going back. And actually, if you see, I kind of did some big kind of strange squiggle um, on my screen of where, um, 
Portugal is. I'm hoping that's where Portugal is. I'm not great at geography, guys. And um, I put it down to Zanzibar. So actually, oh, it went via Oman, then down to Zanzibar. So actually, my whole kind of thing was, you know, I said that I'm all of these, but if you are from any of those countries, you are technically part of Portuguese. It goes back. Um, but that's how I started to figure out who I was. I went to a school with all English children. Um, they were all blonde, blue eyed, basically. And it was strange. And I think until I was 16, I didn't know that I was not white. It was bizarre. Um, I was disillusioned completely. And then I went to a college where it was filled with so many different races, but there was still no one that was Omani or me. Um, so how did I kind of start to figure out who I was? So this is how I figured out who I was. Um, I needed to figure out what makes me a Mandazi and not a beignet. Um, and I still, I still toy with that when I'm trying to do work. Am I a beignet or do I need to be a Mandazi today? And what makes us different? I started, you know, I, I always ate. My family loved food, who doesn't? Um, however, when I went to uni, I had to actually teach myself how to cook. I could cook, but I just didn't want to cook. I lived off of rice and yogurt for a very long time. And then I started cooking and I started looking at my plate thinking, this is so bizarre. Like all this food I get at home, all the food I have at school and all the food I have at my friend's house is so different. And what makes us decide what goes on our plate? Well, looking at these two, the Mandazi and the Beignet, they're exactly the same thing. Um, however, the French think they've nailed it. The Zanzibaris think they've nailed it. Um, but actually what kind of makes us different? Well, it's technically maybe the way we make it, um, the actual flavoring that goes into it. French keep theirs quite basic. We put cardamom in them, we put coconut milk, but those elements is what makes us us. So that's that's how I kind of explain myself. I am a bit of coconut, I'm a bit of cardamom. And then if you track where those coconuts and those cardamoms came from, then you know they're not just from Zanzibar, maybe the cardamoms are from India. So I am an amalgamation of everything that comes into that mandazi. Um, the same way a French person is maybe an amalgamation of everything that comes into that. And maybe along the roots, I reckon the French came to Zanzibar, so I made them a Mandazi and they took it back for sure. Um, so yeah, that's in a summary how I explain um, kind of who I am. I am an amalgamation of whatever is on my plate. Um, these two women are probably an amalgamation of who I am as well. Uh, maybe subconsciously food was kind of my thing. I actually stumbled across the, this old photo during um, the pandemic, this one of my great grandmother. I'd never seen it before. And just by chance, I'd taken this photo of my grandmother and I kind of looked at them the other day and I was like, oh, they look really, really similar. It was almost like a coincidence that they were there. Um, and it was, yeah, it was just really, really nice to see. And that was, that was again, a part of my identity. You know, it's everyone's past transits, whoever took that photo. And I think it was actually my grandmother that took the photo of her mother. You know, she was in a transit, she was in her own transit in. Zanzibar, um, embracing everything around her and her surroundings and her mother was in her surroundings. She took that photo, she came back with it. Then I was in a transit here with my grandmother, we're cooking, we're immersing ourselves in that kind of moment. And I took that photo of her. Um, so it was really nice to kind of stumble upon that and figure out, um, you know, like that, that's part of me too. So yeah. Uh, then this is my grandfather. Um, so this is my grandfather actually in Zanzibar. Um, and I found out again in my own transits of immersing myself in my present, I was looking through photos and I stumbled upon this one of my grandfather and his first ever job in Zanzibar was a canner. And he literally canned food. I didn't even know that was a job, but I guess you didn't have machines back then to do it for you. And when I kind of stumbled upon it, again, it must've been something like that subconsciously there. Um, food is there, it always has been. and viewing it I was kind of like again that's another part of my identity that I didn't realize um, but maybe it's just traveled along so it was really really nice to kind of find this so these are a bunch of photos that I'm not so proud of um, I only probably started cooking properly like when it got to Instagram kind of ways uh, about two two years ago I didn't I knew, just knew I could cook and then I was like oh well, maybe let me try and make food pretty so the Barbie one is my first ever thing that I posted on Instagram. And I just, it is a mess. I don't even know why I thought that was okay to post on Instagram, but I did it. Um, and then I think the, the, the actual tart, this nectarine tart was the first um, kind of one I did on my food Instagram account and not my personal one. And I thought, wow, I've made it. Like someone put me in a magazine. I've nailed that photo. Looking back, I nailed nothing. Um, but 
you know, I, I actually like to look back at these old photos because these were all different times and moments in transit and they all had different experiences around them. I think the, the tar, I actually did this when I was in Holland. I had been living in Holland for two years and I got to a point and I was just like, I need to immerse myself in food. This is my thing. And that was kind of really the start of where everything kind of began. The rest were just me in my experimentation phase, trying to figure out who I was um, amongst food. And actually, if we look at all of these, these were all me trying to show who I was, but none of them actually truly, some of them have little bits of me, maybe the pomegranates on the cupcakes are a bit of me, if you know me and my love for poms. Um, however, they're not, they're not, none of them were me. And so I had to keep finding myself um, and food was the way I just kept getting there. And then this is actually a proper example of probably who I am in food now. I've kind of found my niche and I've used all my moments in transit to help me kind of figure out um, you know, what I want to create and what I want to do. And actually these, these are tacos. However, they are Omani Shua tacos with a chapati base um, with kachumba and tamarind sauce. So these were actually going to be, I had de developed these particular for a supper club I was coming to do in Oman. Um, I was actually petrified to do the supper club in Oman. I was like, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. Like all these Omanis are going to judge me because they know their food. You guys eat your own food more than I do. The only experiences I have of Omani food is when I'm there um, once or twice a year on holiday. So everything is purely off of my own transits and my own moments and listening to other people talk about Omani food and me reading about it and kind of just immersing myself in that element. So I was like, I need to find a way to show Omanis their food, but also show them how we are also an amalgamation of all these other foods and how I am. So I needed to meet that East meets West. And I was really happy. This was amazing, by the way. Like, I, I never say my food is amazing. I let other people decide, but oh my God, this was so, so good. And I was really gutted that um, COVID came and ruined everything because yeah, this was a really great representation of me. And that's always been my aim. This is, I need to show my identity in anything I bring you guys. Um, and slowly but surely I am, I'm getting there. So hopefully, inshallah, we'll have another supper club and these will be there. But making 200 mini chapatis was difficult to try and attempt to do. So bear with me, guys. <laughs> um, so past transit. So for me, transits, yes, we, are, we have been in a transit where we couldn't actually move, um, but we had to try and move mentally, I guess. And I hate this photo, by the way, but... Um, this is something I posted recently, and I like to use past transits to help me imagine, you know, help me create something in the moment and help me fill my cup and feel full. So sometimes if I'm not in the correct mood, and actually through COVID, I had those moments where I wasn't in the mood. I got tired. I wanted to leave this country. And I was reflecting on transits that were really, really great. And when I lived in Holland, it was really great. I loved my time there. Um, however, they know nothing about food. And I happened to be in the supermarket and I came across pickled herring. If any of you know it, it's basically like a pickled fish. Uh, not to everyone's taste. It's a bit like anchovies. And I picked up some and it instantly reminded me of Holland. And that's the one great thing about food is it actually helps you transport to past transits because the idea of smell and touch, I feel like your senses play a big part in any moment of transit. So always embrace your, your senses wherever you are. Um, so I remember picking up this herring, I remember smelling that pickled smell and it brought me back to all the times I used to take strolls across the beach in Holland because I lived really close to the beach. Yeah, they have a beach, I can't believe it. It's, it's weird. Um, and then I was like, let me make something with this. And actually, none of what's on here is actually me. Maybe the pomegranates. I had to just chuck on. I chuck on pomegranates when I'm not sure. So they, they always save me. And um, there's couscous. I can't stand couscous, but I was like, I'm in that moment. And one thing I remembered from Holland is there were so many Moroccans and a lot of my friends were Moroccans while I was there and they love couscous. And I was just trying to bring to elements together that reminded me of Holland. And they ended up coming to this plate. Um, and yeah, I threw the palms on there to make it mine. But I always think that to fill your current cup, remembering good past transits is a really good way um, to stay present. Um, so switching up your transits. This year, we probably all had big dreams to go on holidays to the Bahamas or wherever you wanted to go. I had some big aspirations. I thought I was going to Grenada, like I was going to live my Caribbean dream, but no, um, I was living my dream in the south of England, a um, little place called Portsmouth where my family live. I left my flat in London. I, I say I left, my mother pulled me out of my flat in London 
because she was scared that I'd die alone. Um, so I came down to Portsmouth to be with her and my grandparents, which turned out to be great, but I hate nature. Um, it's not my favorite thing. I mean, I don't hate it like we need it, but I don't like going for strolls in the forest or anything like that. It's not my thing. Um, but I had to find a way to actually move, but not move too far, but move just because I needed to keep my health going, I guess. And so my mom turned around to me and she was like, well, what do you actually like? You love food. She was like, so just go and search your food on these walks. And that's what I did. I mean, I went into like, we went on long walks. I discovered mushrooms growing off of trees, um, found berries everywhere. And it was really nice because I started picking all of this food that I love. I even attempted to grow food. Um, only thing I could grow was tomatoes and chilies. This aubergine still looks like this and it's in my house, it has not changed. But, you know, switching up your transits is not bad. Just because you had an idea of, you know, the move you were gonna make or how you were gonna do something, just switch it up, even to something you don't like. They'll, you will find something in every transit you make and you need to hold on to those moments of transit. Um, then, Kind of how I take that with my food is I take past transits and I work with what I have. So the same way I mentioned about Holland, this was a good one, a good example for me when I it was during Ramadan um, and I fasted the whole month, guys. Well, I was so proud of myself. I had never done that, but lockdown got me to fast the whole month. Um, and the one thing I missed was all of those amazing desserts you have um, during Ramadan. Yes, we have them here, but there's there's just not enough people to eat all the desserts here. So I was craving mahlabiya. It's my favorite one, excuse my pronunciation. Um, and I wanted it how they had it, but you can't always have what you want. And you can't, you shouldn't replicate past transits, okay? You need to, again, work with your present situation the moment you are in. Um, and this was a good example. I had been out foraging, looking for different things. And rhubarb was one of the things that came across my path. I went picking for rhubarb. It is everywhere in England. and. I worked with what I had in my present moment. And then I paired that with something from my past moment, which was the mahlabiya. So I made rhubarb jelly um, with mahlabiya and it was great. And again, this is a form of my identity. I literally mixed my British culture um, in with my Middle Eastern culture. And I really, really enjoyed it. So there is always ways to kind of merge things and, and make it great. Then I started developing a brownie recipe during COVID. I wanted to, I was making all these recipes, but you know, even just for the average British person who maybe doesn't know our food, it's really hard to turn around to them and say, you go and make sure. It's not the easiest. It's not that accessible for everyone to just make. So I had to like figure out something that had me in it, um, but also was just common knowledge. And I couldn't, I can't make brownies. I couldn't make brownies. I was terrible, but I was determined that, you know, I need to figure out this for myself. And I was thinking, who's going to want another brownie recipe? But I was, I needed to figure out all the science behind it. So I spent time just immersing myself in that present moment, thinking, how do I do this brownie? And um, yeah, so I basically made the brownie and it was a really great way for me to connect with people and everyone was sending me their pictures across the world of them making my brownies. I couldn't believe how kind of viral it went. Um, and there were small tweaks in there that were that made it more me. You know, I had in different spices. I obviously finished up with pomegranates. Um, but these are my, this is my nephew. Um, and he was making my brownies during lockdown. He made them quite a bit. And my cousin kept sending me these photos and it was so nice to see because I actually felt like I was in their current transit. They were immersing themselves in that cooking experience. And I felt like I was there because they were making something of mine. And yeah, that was probably one of my, one of my favorite moments. Um, this is me making shua on Eid with my mum. So obviously it was a different type of Eid and I had, to, I had to make it work. I wanted shua. I wanted to feel like I had the tanur. So I took a tiny little barbecue and I put it outside our house and I was like, I'm going to do this. I did have to put it in the oven because the barbecue couldn't handle it the whole time, but I wanted that smoky effect. I tried everything and, you know, to get the, um, actually for sure, you can do every element correctly. You can put all the correct ingredients in it, but if you don't have a date palm bag, you will not get it. So I even took like stones from a date thinking that if I take all of these stones from a date and burn them, I might get that sure taste, it did not work. But, you know, this is another example of, again, working with what you have in that moment. We need to stop kind of, I think the chat, the whole thing for transit for me was keeping that cup full um, and being present and yeah, just rolling with what you have. And I was kind of impressed with the show. I managed to buy banana leaves on Amazon. So God bless you, Amazon, for coming through in, in hard moments. Um, and 
one thing I love to do, if any of you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, well, I suggest you go follow. Um, I actually love to tell a story. I will make up stories. This is a really good example of a story I made up, one of my favorite ones. It's not true at all, but I totally like feel um, that it, Kachori is a good example of showing how, you know, we are all an amalgamation. English people love their mashed potato. I'm positive an Englishman came to Zanzibar and saw a Zanzibari making these, um, I'm, no, I'm positive an Englishman came for some mashed potato and the Zanzibari took it and deep fried it. I've noticed that we tend to deep fry a lot of things. And this is one of those examples. If one thing I love to do, I love to create a story for everyone. I like to put everyone in their own moment of transit and let them use their imagination because it almost like fills their own cup. They almost feel like they, you know, they're kind of part of it. Um, and it's just nice because sometimes you make things and you're thinking, how do I explain what the hell this is? Who wants a deep fried potato ball? But actually everyone wants a deep fried potato ball. They just don't know it until they've heard the story. So if anything, I love to tell a story. It really helps to express my identity and make sense of it as well, and also help others make sense of it. Um, ceviche. So I added in these photos quite last minute. Again, it was on the element of storytelling. So everyone in Oman, you should all know Kasha. Um, I know it go back and forth. And I always have a debate with people because I could never figure out which fish it was, but it's sardines, um, if I'm correct. And obviously it's very lemony, it's, we have it with everything, it's great. Um, but the, me getting dried sardines in this country is extremely hard. And one thing I actually learned is again, when I'm trying to figure out my identity, I always look to the past and past transits. And food history is a great, great thing. And ceviche is actually an Arab thing. Um, so Arabs actually went to Peru and they actually introduced them to this. So they were making things very similar to Persia and then Peruvians ended up adapting it to ceviche. And I remember uh, just sharing these on Instagram and I just turned ceviche into something that kind of made it more Omani. Um, I, I did get a lot of backlash because I had Omanis telling me, no, you can't use salmon, you should be using tuna to make it more Omani. Like I'm working with what I have guys. Um, but yeah, I, again, this, these are really good representations of me. The, the, um, the first one with the salmon and the mango and the strawberries like the mango gives me that bit of Zanzibar. Um, I used the tamarind sauce in this. So that kind of gave me those Omani feels, Zanzibari feels, the strawberries are there because they were in season. And then the second one is, um, yeah, the second one was done with hibiscus lemon. So that really, I really had Omani in mind when I did that. So it's that elements always there. Um, so this I wanted to put in because Yes, I can. I now I'm proud to say that I can take good. I can take good pictures of food. I can cook good food. This was a classic example over um, the recent couple of months. It is a shamble. The first or the last year a shamble. I like to hope you can all tell which one was the good one. Um, but I was desperate to recreate shakshuka, but um, taking something from Zanzibar. So for me, um, if you, any of you know, we have like a dish which is spinach with coconut. Um, not the prettiest of things. I used to hide it from all of my friends because I thought this is so ugly. I can't show people this, it's embarrassing. Uh, and I was like, how would I make it so that British people love it and everyone else loves it? And uh, British people love shakshuka. They think it's like, I think the world happened in shakshuka. So I was like, right, I need to introduce them to a new shakshuka. And I was like, give them the spinach version. And literally I made my grandmother's spinach dish and added in those eggs, added in some tomatoes, a few more elements. But I kept struggling with the photo and I was like, what the hell is going on here? Every time I do this, it looks like a mess. I can't cook eggs. I was ready to give up on my career here. I was like, this is it. I'm doomed. But, you know, this was a great moment because I had to take a moment out of this current transit of me immersing myself in cooking and go do something else. And I came back week after week until I got it right. I finally got it right. And I realized that probably is all I need is pomegranates. So who knows? Um, but, you know, that's, that's one moment. If you feel like you're having a really bad time in that current transit, just remove yourself from the situation. Go find something else. I think I literally just went to find something else to do, something else that I knew would fuel me and just fill my cup. And then I eventually came back to this. I ate a lot of eggs over this period. Let me just tell you that. So kind of my summary of um, what is transit to me, I think that it makes up three key elements. Uh, one of those elements is, you know, loving your people 
um that's really really important and I got that chance to do that over lockdown I did not want to go and stay with my family over lockdown I thought they were going to disrupt my whole ecosystem I thought I wouldn't be able to cook you know I was like what camera equipment do I take what like uh, cooking equipment do I take I just went into panic mode but I came and I actually got to make my grandmother famous over that time she is the key everyone just wants her on Instagram I get messages telling me we literally just watch your stories for your grandmother so I'm like what like no one's coming for me like I, so so it's been great you know if you immerse yourself in your current moment in your current transit and you really love the people that are surrounding that transit you're really going to love whatever you're doing and so it was great and I got to learn so much from her and I still am like trolling her and taking loads of videos of her and it's been great uh love yourself remember like if you're if you're creative and you're doing something you need to remember why you did it so I think for me I obviously just liked eating and I need to continue eating. So I'm always trying to find ways that allow me to continue eating and allow me to continue sharing food. Because I always want you to be as happy as that little baby face that's got a bottle of hot sauce next to her. I want you to feel as happy as that. So whichever kind of transit moment you're in, just really, really make sure you know that you, yeah, you appreciate yourself in that moment. Um, cool. And then love your craft. So I got to spend a lot of time creating beautiful recipes over this time. I'm so grateful. I actually had thoroughly enjoyed lockdown. Um, although I do want to go on holiday, but yeah, really love your craft. A lot of these recipes were done over lockdown and it's been really nice to experiment, learn new skills. And the, I think the one beauty is if you can't, my aims over summer were to go to Oman and travel around Oman and learn loads of new recipes. And I still want to do that, but there will be a time in transit for that. But yeah, this current transit period where I couldn't move too much I mean I had to find new ways and I hate online courses but I decided to sign up to one and I taught myself new skills if you look down at the bottom of one of these you'll see um, a croissant I made pan au chocolat I never thought I could make that pastry by hand I nailed it so now I know that I can now bring in these new elements that I've learned and teach myself like loads of new skills and then use that to show my identity through a different way Next, you'll see like Omani versions of croissants and it's just gonna, they're gonna bang. So just wait for it, guys. Um, yeah, so love your craft. And I would love to tell you what this is, but I thought I'd just put it in because I've been loving my craft now so much. And I just immerse myself in that moment um, and really spend time like trying to master what I'm doing. And so now I'm working towards things I really, really want to do and making sure that I can continue to like make Omani food just super amazing that is my main goal in life I will make sure that everyone has Omani food on their plate one day so yeah uh, just to summarize it moments in transit um, are a chance to fall in love with your craft if we fix these then we can flourish and that is all from me guys <laughs> thank you so much that was so inspiring it was such a great way to start the morning yes <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to take questions. There are some in the chat, but um, I kind of want to ask you for it. While people are thinking of their questions, I kind of want to ask you, um, how, how do you think, what's next for Dina after COVID? Ooh, after COVID? God, uh, my COVID's over. I'm tired. Um, <laughs> what, is, what is next for Dina? So, yes, I have that platform where I get to share Omani food to an extent, but it's not enough for me. Like, I need to make sure everyone knows the food. And it's really weird because we're so small, not everyone knows us. And it's really nice keeping to ourselves. Um, but I just feel like, you know, one thing that frustrates me is even Omanis don't know their own food. And if food just isn't food, it's not just something that you eat, you know, it really tells a story. And if any of you have ever seen the stories I have with my grandmother while we're cooking, you know, she'll always tell me some random little thing and you don't get those moments again. So. For me, food brings you all around the table. And that's why I started the supper clubs in the UK, because it was a chance to bring loads of people around the table and get them all talking, get them immersed in experience. Um, and for some, they'd been to Oman and they wanted to have that memory again. So they'd come to my supper clubs. But for me next, like hopefully, inshallah, like I would like to get from cookbooks to sharing it across like on TV and things. But I really want to kind of take it to the next level. I want to make sure Omani food is accessible for everyone. So whether that's creating recipe books, whether that's introducing food products, anything that's going to kind of make it travel. Everyone needs to know Omani cuisine, not the rest of the Arab world. No, no, we're tired. There's those in Middle East and like we've got certain countries that are doing so well in the Middle Eastern world. Like, like here, everyone just associates Middle Eastern food with Lebanese food. And that's great. But there is more to that. We're really lucky. Oman is, is placed in such a position and it has such a history that 
we have all the great like spices that come from India. We have all of the great ingredients that came from places like Zanzibar. We actually have great history with Europe and a lot of their stuff is our stuff too. We just kind of don't realize it. Um, so hopefully I would get there through those different elements. So I'm going to read some questions from the chat, but if anyone wants to speak up uh, or say something to Dina, just raise your hand and I'll call your name. You can unmute yourself and talk to Dina directly. But for now, we're going to start with, <laughs> um, there's a question that says, how long does it take you to peel palms? Oh my God. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, it doesn't. Well, I, that's a lie. I'd say my, I've got it down to about a minute. I, I tried my quickest to do it in one minute. I've learned many tricks. Um, but however, my ceiling, my walls get covered in pomegranate juice. I have no control. Keep getting there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get into the world record for it. I think I should aim for that. Maybe Guinness World Record. Maybe that's the yeah. first book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question from Zahra that says, are you going to do more live cooking sessions? I made my first chapati with you. Oh, lots of people made their first chapatis with me and they're like first good sambal. So I'm really proud of that. Am I going to do more? Probably. Um, I would like to. Uh, hopefully, like I am at the moment, like the last photo you saw, um, making loads of dishes and they will be out on air and I actually be talking in them. They won't just be my usual non-talking ones. So, yeah, I probably will for sure do more. <laughs> Um, Vahuka asked, how do you stay true to your craft? Consistency is so difficult. How do you keep up? Oh, consistency is so difficult. And if anyone's uh, like being a follower for the long time, I, I went through a really, con I would say, yeah, most of lockdown, I was there three to four recipes a week. You would see me out there and it's so difficult. You're constantly having to learn and teach yourself. Um, the last September and October, I was, and now I've been extremely busy with other commitments. Um, and that was food related I just can't put them on the gram yet and so it's been really really hard and I've tried to make sure that I show up if anything just show up um, if you can't show up three to four times a week whatever it doesn't matter but just show up at least once a week make that effort and and a lot of the problems I had over September was it wasn't I wasn't cooking that shakshuk is a really good example everything I cooked looked disgusting I don't know what was going on I was cooking great dishes and I was like I don't know what's going on so we all have those mental blocks or like and th the worst thing is when you're creative like you can't just it's not maths you can't just make it happen and get that number um you just got to keep going so you know what I always do is if I can't figure it out in that moment I, I leave the situation and I completely do something else that is no correlation to that. And then I come back again. And that really, really helps. But if anything, anything you do, just consistency, it's just show up. Even if you don't want to do it in that day, try and show up for half an hour and it makes a difference. I have days I don't want to cook. I will try my hardest to just walk into that kitchen and do something. And even if I don't want to go into the kitchen, I will then decide, right, what do I want to cook next week? And I'll try and plan that. Or what ingredient do I want to learn about? Or sometimes i just sit here by the way guys everyone that's here i want you all to let me know what your favorite omani recipe is wherever you are from oman because one thing i do if, if you don't know i actually work for the anglo omani society so if i'm not talking about omani food i'm just preaching oman to the rest of england um so whenever i have a meeting with an omani i always ask them hey like what's your favorite omani food and where are you from in oman and i want them to give me something that's not what they get like the, the usual ones you hear so whatever you do just yeah just show up and that's my version of showing up you, you could literally just be researching anything but just find something yeah i think that's a really really great advice for any creative endeavor um it's it's so hard showing up like as easy as you make it sound it's it's so yeah. difficult but so i think it's important it's definitely important. yeah uh, we have some we have some questions still in the chat but uh fatma al raises her raised her hand so i'm gonna ask fatma to unmute herself and you can ask dina your question um good morning good morning <laughs> i don't know why i'm nervous <laughs> okay um just a question though yeah um what's what in, what inspires you like what keeps you creative like mixing oh. all those oh god what flavors that? together do you know what it is um maybe food is an easy no, it's not as easy but the thing about food for me is a, is the reaction to people so one thing about me is I cook a lot I don't eat anything I cook okay I can cook it's, uh, the other day I had to film something and I was I cooked about four different meals everyone was like ripping them apart and eating so much of it and I went and bought a McDonald's 
okay so i don't cook for me I, sometimes i do like i enjoy it i enjoy that process um but i do it for others i love to see i so cliche and i hate to say it but i love to see the way people are so happy when they eat my food that smile it's and do you know what it's almost a bit of narcissism it's not narcissism but it is an extent because you get happy when you see someone else happy at something you did so even if you're an artist or something someone looks at your drawing and they go wow i love that and they want to hang it on their wall deep down we all have the element of narcissism when we go okay yeah and that's what fuels you that's what keeps you going because you see someone else is like really really ecstatic about your work so then you then want to continue and i think that's half of the reason obviously i i love food anyway um i really just enjoy eating so you know and it's the only time i'm quiet and i don't want to talk to anyone um so for me that's probably why i love it because it i just I don't know what's happening in the rest of the world. It's a really, really good way to zone out. You're in your state of flow. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to combine two questions, Uthman and Leila. So Uthman asked, do you have a YouTube channel? And Leila asked, when is the cookbook coming out? <gasps> so uh, do I have a YouTube channel? Oh, I do, but I need to work on it. I actually have um, someone on my team that's helping me work on it. So yes, a lot of my videos go onto Instagram at the moment, but I am trying to diversify to the world of YouTube. It is a lot to keep up with all this content creation, guys. I don't know, like it's a full-time job and I have a full-time job and then that's a full-time job, like round the clock. Um, so yeah, I'm working towards that cookbook. Funnily enough, um, I'm actually working towards a proposal at the moment that I, inshallah, will be sending out. So hopefully cookbooks take a long time and it will actually involve me coming to Oman for a good period of time. So if anyone wants to like drive me around Oman and help me discover food, I'm going to need translators. Um, so yeah, inshallah, inshallah, like with the next year, it will take a while, but I'm excited for it. I, I, I will, the one thing actually, I haven't sent my proposal because I can't think of a name. Um, for this book and I know the name will come I just feel like I need to put something down it just needs to be great <laughs> I'm sure it'll be amazing we're all we're Thank all you. waiting patiently <laughs> it's okay take your time like we can wait two years but like three maybe <laughs> pushing it <laughs> uh, there's a question from Noah or Noah um, what will you do if you don't have a kitchen but you got the urge of cooking something using electric steam pots I wait, wait, hold on. So I don't have a kitchen, but I've got the urge to, to cook use yeah. electric steam pots. Oh, you just cook. You don't need a kitchen. Do you know what's weird? Okay. You, you need a kitchen for some things, but you don't need a kitchen for everything. If something's raw, you just get going. If I, if I had an electric steam pot and I didn't have a kitchen, I could make so many dishes like in that steam pot. Okay. You just need, as long as I've got an electricity pot, you just get cracking. I would put in anything that literally doesn't involve using an oven and with Zanzibar food luckily it never involves an oven um so yeah you can cook so much and I if one thing wherever I travel actually um in my suitcase I always take a portable scales I take my if I can I try and take my electric whisk and I take a thermometer and, and usually a, a certain spatula I like to use I carry those around oh and an icing bag So I always carry those wherever I travel because you never know what situation I could be in and I could just whip them all out and get baking. Um, so I don't think a kitchen would actually stop me from cooking. Uh, you can be anywhere and just get going with what you have. Um, so our last question is from Dina, but if you guys still want to speak up, say something, comment, uh, raise your hand and we'll, we'll call you out to speak. So Dina asked, what other country cuisine inspires you? Okay, so... Um, that's interesting i'm very i'm actually really really picky with food i very very fussy um i eat a lot though but i love different elements so let's give an example i love 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 peruvian food i love peruvian food in particular for the way they they use fish um so that's a really the way they use fish and the way they use fruit and if you ever see lots of my dishes it's always fruit usually even in the savory dishes so i lo really love them for that i would say i love french pastries just for the technique I don't necessarily like French cuisine in general I feel like there's a lot missing the, the, their flavors are very rich it's not my thing they use a lot of dairy I'm not into that um, but I love the techniques that I've learned from my pastry course actually so I really appreciate those I would also say God, what other one is an Italian food but Italian food only inspires me in Italy I will never like I think there's one restaurant I go to in London that has great Italian food it's super fresh um But as I refuse to eat Italian food anywhere else but Italy, because when you watch an Italian make it in Italy, it's the way they pick their ingredients. Everything is super, super fresh. And 
I don't see that as much in, lo in loads of other countries. And it's just the way that they can take just tomatoes and maybe a bit of butter and give you a great pasta. I love the way they take nothing um, and put it on your plate. So yeah, them too. That's awesome. Is there anyone else who has something to say to, D uh, to Dina or... I just realized I said there's a question from Dina and then I'm like, okay, wait, <laughs> I got confused. There's two Dinas now. <laughs> um, is there anyone wants to say anything? You can raise your hand. Otherwise, I'd just like to thank uh, the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth for sponsoring us as well as UMC Productions who have helped us with our content, online content. Um, stay tuned, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at CM underscore Muscop. Um, Oh, wait, we have another question. The same question. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. There's, there's, there's questions coming in. I, I, I jumped the gun at, at, at ending this chat and I'm sorry. We'll, okay, let's, let's go back to the questions. What is your favorite dish to make and why? Oh, so this is interesting. It's actually not an Omani dish. It's not a Zanzibari dish. It's so bad. I feel like I've just preached everything about Oman and I'm going back against my word. Actually, it's it's technically an Iranian dish. So it's called Fesanjun. I don't know if you've ever had it. So traditionally, Fesanjun is done with walnuts. It's a walnut stew with pomegranates. However, what, what I do like is that my family, because we have, because my grandfather was actually originally, his parents were from Iran, um, when they came to Zanzibar, they couldn't get walnuts. So they started using cashew nuts. And this is the part I love about travel. So they started using cashew nuts and they taught my grandmother how to make fest in June, but with cashew nuts. And then my grandmother taught me how to make it. But apparently when she first came to England, she couldn't get cashew nuts. So she used to use peanut butter um, to make it. And this stew, if you've never had it, it I, like, I highly recommend it. It's, it's really nice to make. It's full of pomegranates. I obviously love pomegranates. Um, but it's so, so rich from the nuts. But then the, the element of the pomegranates just really sweetens up. It's such a beautiful stew. Oh, I could actually eat it right now. That's my favorite dish. <laughs> um, I think um, I have a question. And it's a difficult yeah. one, but I feel like I already know the answer. If you could only have um, two things, right? Either have pomegranates, but no other fruit ever again in your life, or have all the other fruits for the rest of your life except pomegranates, what would you choose? And it includes cooking, not just eating. <laughs> um, I take the pomegranates. Wow. I would take them because pomegranates, I know I can use them in food. I know that they're great as a drink. I know that they're great as a sprinkle. And I know that the color will always make every ugly dish pop. But such yeah, an insult to all other fruits. I mean, no, you know what? Okay, I love, I love, don't get me wrong. I love, love, love my fruits. But man, if I had to lose a pomegranate, I'd have to find something else. I had to like cut up strawberries so small, make them look like pomegranates. <laughs> Yes, don't ask me such questions, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, Moza recommended a book title for you. It's called Discovering My Omani Flavors. So yeah, I was start. thinking, I, I, do you know what? Part of me wants to include the word Oman in it. It's just finding the right way to engulf everyone else. So yeah, we could, we could be on the line. But no, none of you told me um, actually what transit meant to you. Like, did any of you actually know? And I'm really disappointed. None of you told me what transit means to you. No has another question actually about transit. He says, does... If people want to tell us in the chat what transit means to them, or if you want to unmute yourself and tell us, that would yeah. be great. Nu asked, do your transit got transited into other transits? Like, oh, <laughs> I feel like that's question. like, when, yeah, that's like when you enter a dream and you're in another dream. Uh, <laughs> do your, tran your transit got transited into other transit? Yes, I think, yeah, because past transits, for instance, um, yeah, I would say, I say I would probably say that the tacos is a good way to explain that one because I experienced sure in, in Oman in a really great transit of watching them put it in a tanur, tasting it after it come out of that tanur. And then I spent time in another transit trying to replicate that with my mom in the oven um, and trying to get those flavors correct. And then I knew I was going to be in another transit, um, which would have been my supper club. So I was trying to bring that whole experience that they have with sure back into the supper club so I almost got to that last transit but yeah I'm going, I need to I need to see if I've been in any other transits feels a bit out of the world That's a great question does anyone want to say what transit means to them I'm going to give yeah. you time to think about it before <laughs> ending everything oh you must one of you guys must know what transit kind of means to you guys or just come on 
All of you are so quiet. None of you. Oh. And this trend, yeah, do you know what? Transit does, but that's what's the thing. Like, I, I'm at the stage now where I've done so many different transits that obviously don't involve a plane, and now I want it to involve a plane, um, COVID or not. Yeah, I know, I'm totally with that transit. Um, All my dreams yeah. now revolve around airports and airplanes, not destination. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad because when you can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just when you can't have that one thing that you want and you do everything. And that's what I literally tried to do over lockdown is I couldn't have um I couldn't have what I wanted so I filled myself with everything else and at first I was procrastinating and using that as an excuse but I just had to do everything else and I think I've done everything I don't think there's anything left for me to do I even attempted exercising that lasted a couple of months so I've done it all um tried to improve my Arabic still struggling (laughs) that's that's a constant struggle even for me I'm struggling um uh, Leith says I feel transit is basically being open for other options and other plans. Yeah, that's a really good, yeah, that is it. You just got to stay in it. Otherwise, you're never going to fill your cup if you're constantly relying on a transit that you want to do. So you've just got to yeah, take whatever comes your way. And Lemise said, to me, transit is more associated with something temporary, either a, phys- a physical or a mental journey, not a final destination, but a journey. I love oh, that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. God, I wish I'd said that. <laughs> Fatma wants to say something so Fatma you can unmute yourself and speak um, well transit for me is um, my journey I've been on a, on a weight loss journey for two years now and I've been trying to discover myself and during this quarantine I really did discover that I really love cooking oh. and baking So like I opened up this page on Instagram like a month ago where I advise other people who are in the same journey as I am. And uh, I do share recipes and I try to be creative with my meals because it gets me in my comfort zone, to be honest. It prevents me from overthinking, staying in the kitchen, trying to be creative and adding all those designs and fruits and trying yeah. to be as artistic as you like you can be you know it gets you away from this whole world and all and yeah so like I've been through a lot through these like two years and yeah so like the my trainer I've been assigned to this trainer for like two months now and then he He made me discover myself, to be honest. He told me, like, I sent him my meals. Like, I would send him just, like, boiled chicken with a (laughs) cup of salad or, like, maybe grilled chicken with a cup of salad or white rice. And then he's like, why don't you try to be creative? So, like, I started searching up on Google and tried to, like, copy other recipes. And then as soon as I got to know the basics, that's when I started adding my own flavors and tried to give it a mix up and all. And yeah, that's like, that's my transit. That's me yes. trying to discover myself. I love that. That's exactly how it should be. Um, and I think you have so much free, I think with any creative thing, you just, because you don't have the answer, you just keep going. I mean, actually baking always gives you the answer. If you get baking wrong, it will show you in, in its final exactly. result. Oh savory, yeah, savory dishes, however, will never show you in the final result. They can, you can just mask them just about. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a great way. And that's exactly how it should be. I'm really happy to. What's your, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, it's underscore the B club. The B, so okay. it's in the breakfast club. Oh, cool. I'm going to look out. Fatma, you should write it in the chat because a, a couple of people yeah. uh, want to know as well. I'm uh, sure. We... Leith also uh, wants to speak. Leith, you can unmute yourself. So uh, just adding to my point, um, I feel like there is a balance between committing to one thing and being open to other options. And mm-hmm. there is this believe aspect to it you have to believe that once you're there um you would be um offered like different options or different paths as long as you um believe and commit yourself to to that one thing so there's there's this balance between uh sticking to one thing and being open 
to other options if you get what I mean no I, t- I totally get that and yes I like think food breathe food cook food do whatever with food but it doesn't mean that I block myself off to every single like other element that it could be and if I did that I probably wouldn't be able to create what I create um I think you really have to be and everything surrounds you like everything's connected in some sort of way so whether someone could approach me and it could be something fashion related but I will find my way to include what I know I'm good at into that but it doesn't mean I'm going to turn it off and be like no no no, no that's fashion I'm food let's stay away from each other there is always a way to combine all everything and yeah you, you should never close yourself off just maybe like we have that saying jack of all trades in English in English but there's actually an ending to that saying and it says you know if you're not a jack jack of all trades master of none but you know you can the ending there's another ending and I don't know exactly but it basically says you don't need to always be a master of one um so have your thing but always be open to other things if you block yourself off then yeah it's not good it's like you said we're all an amalgamation of everything around us so yes. those are the things that feed our creative process somehow exactly if there's any more questions or anyone who wants to speak i'm going to be as open as possible and as patient as possible for you guys if not then we're going to close the session but i'm going to give you guys some time to think about it we'll sit in silence and wait for me I, i'm very uncomfortable with the uh, with silences i always try to fill it with sounds <laughs> but i think you know i'd like to let you all know the sun is now out That's excellent. That's good to hear. Good morning. I woke up at 5:30 for all of you. This is hard work. <laughs> uh, but so, no, it'd be nice to be here. So I guess there's not any more questions. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth. I'd like to thank Unk Productions for being our local sponsors. I hope you guys can join us next month. Uh, we have an exciting event hopefully for you guys. Um, follow on the meantime follow us on Instagram and Twitter at cm underscore muscop if you came in late or had to leave early if you left early you probably aren't listening to this but we're going to post the video of this event in a couple of days on our website so you can go back and watch this and learn again and feel inspired again uh, until next time thank you so much Dina thank you everyone No, thank you guys like for giving me your Friday morning because I know obviously in Oman um, it's your weekend so I'm actually very very grateful for that. And by the way, when I am in Oman, I I like to come to Oman quietly, but I will actually start telling people I'm coming to Oman and I will I'm happy to cook in anyone's house. Um just bring the ingredients and I'll bring my thermometer and mixer and scales. So yeah. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much. Uh have a good rest of the day and have a good week ahead. Happy Omani Women's Day also. Oh yeah, happy Awani Women's Day to everyone. Well, the ladies. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you all.